It can often be difficult to evade an antivirus when you're looking to run a script on a target system. In this example, we'll use a tool called Armor to create an encrypted payload on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When you're trying to do something bad on someone else's computer, there can be a variety of different barriers in your way. One in particular can be antivirus, and it's something that will look for signatures of bad behaviors like establishing a remote shell to a server that's maybe not something you would expect. Now this is where simply executing this script would be detected and blocked by an antivirus. And in some cases, like macOS, this might not be necessary by simply encoding it in Base64. Now there are still some of antivirus scanners that will detect this, so you can go the added step of actually encrypting it so that you can deliver a first part of the attack, which is called a stager, that is encrypted and thus doesn't reveal any of your further intentions. Now this is important because you want to hide exactly what your methodology is, you don't want to burn any IP addresses you'll be using later, so you don't really want to give away the game by uh, dropping some malware that contains your entire set of operations. Instead, you want something small, difficult to understand that could be an innocent command that maybe you could trick somebody into running in a set of instructions or something, maybe a USB thumb drive that you get them to plug into their computer. Now, if you keep it small and kind of innocent looking, or at least make it difficult to tell that it's malicious, you can probably get it to run more easily. And that's kind of the point of the script we'll look, today, we'll look at today, which is written by Tokyo Neon, a writer at uh, Nullbyte. So in order to run this, we'll need a macOS system to attack, and we'll also need a second computer in order to coordinate the attack and decrypt the payload that we will be creating. In this case, we'll simply try to encrypt a file to simulate something more nasty like ransomware. But in real life, you could maybe create a backdoor or do something else. It really depends on what you want. Once you have this together, we can begin. So one of the cool things about Armor is the ability to create a payload that is pretty much undetectable and that you can't tell what it's going to do until you run it. So in this case, we're going to encrypt something that is a little bit more damaging than the previous example that we used in the article. We're actually going to encrypt the file and overwrite it so that until we provide the password, we won't be able to get back into it and see what was there. Now on a larger scale, this could be interpreted as ransomware. So be careful with this command because on macOS, it doesn't actually require a password in order to run and it can arbitrarily overwrite uh, files with encrypted data. So on the GitHub page, we can see that downloading Armor is relatively straightforward. We'll need to just git clone the file and then we can go in and provide it with the proper permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and copy here and then go to a terminal window and here, let's see, I'm going to clear this, minimize these windows, or at least just keep this one open, and then git clone to install armor. Now, once we have that uh, ready, we can cd into armor, which actually we already are because we already have it downloaded, but we can ls and then see all the different files that are included in what we just downloaded. And we'll see that armor.sh is the payload we're actually looking for. So we will need to give it permission um, to execute. So we can type chmod plus x and then armor.sh. So now we have permission to execute this. So now you can see here we have this payload.txt file already. So let's take a look at what's inside because that's what we'll actually be attempting to execute on our victim machine. We'll type cat payload.txt. So this is a pretty simple command, but it's just saying we want to use OpenSSL to use AES encryption to and assault in order to, to take the file test.txt and output an encrypted version, which is the same file. So it's basically going to overwrite it using the password password. So having a hard-coded password isn't exactly a great example of ransomware, but in this case, it'll serve for what we're trying to show off. So now we're going to actually go ahead and use Armor. So I've also established a Netcat connection back to my MacBook that we're going to run this on so that we can generate something and then uh, generate a 
a script for us to run on our victim computer and send it through Netcat so that we can test it out and see if it works. So let's take a look at Armor and first we'll just go ahead and run it with no arguments. So if we just type sudo bash armor.sh Oops. There we go. Here you can see it's expecting the path to the target, which is going to be the IP address, and then the port, uh, the port that we're going to be using. So first, let's find the attacker's IP address. In this case, that's our IP address. We can just type ifconfig. And he, here we can see that our IP address is 192.168. 016. So we'll do that and then we will also need to type a port number and in this case we can pick an arbitrary one it doesn't really matter. We'll type 1337. So now we can go ahead and run this and let's see if we are able to do something now. Oh right sorry <laughs> yeah so the reason this didn't work is because we didn't provide a payload. So our payload is going to be just target uh, payload dot text. There we go. Cool. So we've generated an encryption key. We have generated an encrypted payload, SSL certificates, and an SSL key. So the stager has been saved here, and now we have the encrypted payload that we can send to our victim. And maybe we tell them that this is something else. Maybe we get a quick second to run this on the payload on the victim system. But this shouldn't provide too much information about what it actually is, because if it were to be intercepted, then it wouldn't be possible for them to figure out really what this command was attempting to do until we unlock it with the key that we're going to host on a server on our attacker machine. Now I'm going to use my Netcat connection to send this command over to my victim machine and we'll see exactly what happens when we run it. Now over here, I'm also going to start the Netcat listener and that'll allow us to listen to see if the command is successfully executed on the victim machine. And you can see here, now we are listening on this port here. Now on our target MacBook, we have the payload here and we want to see if we can affect the file that we're targeting, which is uh, called test.txt. So first let's take a look and see what's inside the file to begin with. We'll cat test.txt. And we can see we have some random garbage, so let's actually replace it with some text that we want to encrypt. So let's do cat and then test.txt. And then we'll say, hello, this is some file stuff. Great. And so let's see if that worked. And it appended it, but that's just fine. Uh, so now we have a string and uh, both an encrypted string and unencrypted string. It's fine, we just need an example. And in this case, this is the file that we'll be targeting. So what we'll do then is we're going to go ahead and dump the payload in here. And let's see if we run this, if we can get a reaction on the other side, which means that we will be looking for basically the uh, other computer to um, be listening for some sort of uh, response to get the encryption key to kind of figure out what the rest of this is supposed to do on the system. So when we run this, what we hope to see is, oh, there we go, a reaction on the attacker computer where it's grabbing the command and actually going ahead and executing it on this system. So now if we go back and let's go ahead, oh, you can see the last part of this actually deletes the history so we can't go back. We can do cat test.txt. And here we can see everything has been completely encrypted and now we are not able to access any of the information that was inside until we decrypt it. So we don't know what the password is and because this is totally uh, obfuscated, it's really difficult to go back and say what exactly happened to this file if we were the victim. So in general, this is a really good way of encrypting the payload up until the last second and being able to grab that encryption uh, key from over the network. Now this example is a little bit superfluous because we probably could have just executed these commands in the clear and macOS would not have had a problem with it. 
In fact, base64 uh, is usually a acceptable option for most cases, as Tokyo Neon shows in his excellent write-up on the script that he developed. Now, it's also important to note that this means you need to take close control of your computer's physical security, because if you have a system like Windows that might have an impressive antivirus running, it won't really matter if it comes up against something like this where the payload is so hidden that it wouldn't be able to scan inside and find out what the instructions lurking within are set to do. Now, if you were on a system where uh, a stager executed and then it downloaded an encryption key, that latent payload could be unlocked and run on your system and could present a real problem because the antivirus would have zero opportunity to detect it. That's all we have for this uh, episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for the 100,000 subscribers who have chosen to follow us. Uh, we do this because it brings community together and we get to share this with other like-minded people. So we are really happy to have all of you with us. Uh, if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter. I love to hear from all of you and uh, we'll see you next time.